Here's the iron drive with permanent magnets using two microwave oven transformers at 4400 volts and a 10 kV DC rectifier. Now we've gone to a 50 microfarad run capacitor to get more power. You can see from the back side of this device where the argon gas is coming in between two concentric copper tubes and when it reaches the magnets and uh, four kilovolt voltage across the magnets like a Corbino disc, then these magnets make it fire outward with a capacitive exhaust. It's called a ratchet noise. Here we are now using just one microwave oven transformer. That's really all we need. You hear the rest of the sound? One microwave oven transformer, 2200 volts, and a 10 kilovolt DC rectifier. Argon gas is coming out of that tube through there between two copper tubes, and these ring of magnets makes it spin and discharge like a ratchet. What's happening is these two wires here and here attach to two different concentric copper tubes to give it plus or minus 2000 volts DC. Now when that ionizes the argon gas so the argon ions sit on the inside copper tube and the electrons on the outside so it's a circular capacitor then when we add this magnetic field that current begins to spin like that and also because there's radial components in this field it discharges that way so all that huge electrostatic energy of the capacitor shoots out again more than just the spin A lot of power there at 4400 volts, 5 amps in the primary circuit. Let's turn it on again. was a slightly higher flow of argon gas. We have one microwave oven transformer, a 60 microfarad run capacitor, which will give about 5 amps, and a 10 kilovolt DC rectifier. Now without any magnets, all this device does is create an arc between the two copper tubes plus and minus 2200 volts DC as argon gas goes in between these two copper tubes, which you can see here, and gets ionized with argon ions inside, electrons outside. When we add these special set of magnets, which have an axial magnetic field that way, north, and then also lots of little north magnetic fields pointing inward called radial, that makes the arc spin and also it provides a force going that way which discharges the capacitor so 
the argon gas not only gets ionized, but the capacitor gets discharged that way with a huge amount of electric energy, and that shoots it out and gives you much more power than you would get otherwise. Also use a simple electromagnet to power this device instead of permanent magnets. We can attach it to a 24 volt power supply with about 10 amps of power and use that instead of permanent magnets here. That works a little bit, however, we have to put a lot more power in, almost as much as we're putting in to ionize the gas, and we can work directly from AC like this. However, we have to phase the AC current in phase between the two power supplies, one at 2200 volts, the other at 24 volts. So there are a few technical issues. I've done it but the easier option is just to use permanent magnets and this 10 kilovolt DC rectifier. Now this next set of magnets is called a radiomagnetic field. Four neomagnets with all the end poles pointing in and it produces a very, very strong spin. If we take it off, nothing happens. You can see. Put it back on again, flipped. It starts spinning again. Here's another important control. We have all the red leads positive going to the copper tube outside that takes the electrons E mines to the outside. We have one black lead going to the aluminium rod in the center and that takes the argon ions into the center. And you can see the arcs are clearly spinning clockwise. Now when we switch the leads the other way you can see it spins very strongly anti-clockwise. Now we have negative charge around the outside of the copper tube. The argon ions are spinning around the outside. We have positive charge at the center of the tube, so the electrons are inside. Going back to the first arrangement, with positive charges outside of the copper tube, negative charges inside of the aluminium rod, you can see it spinning clockwise. Now we have argon ions near the center, and electrons around the copper tube on the outside. It certainly spins very fast. is fairly stable. In early work, just to test the physics of this device, I ordered a series of DC ignition coils from eBay. And you can see each one takes in 15 volts DC, puts 40,000 volts DC out, but the wattage is only 4 to 10 watts. So eight of them together only give maybe 100 watts, 200 watts at most. So that's good to test the physics, but if we want to go to space, we have to have something much more powerful. So now I'm switching to a different kind of power supply, and that's what I'll show you today. In order to get much more power, I set up a series of five microwave oven transformers. Each of them takes 240 volts in through these little red and black wires from an isolation transformer and a variac, and we put a 40 microfarad run capacitor here to limit how much current goes, as I'll explain in a minute. Now, the inputs are all wired in parallel. I've got two of them on now. The outputs are all wired in series. So one of these will give 2200 volts AC, two will give 4400 volts AC, 6600 volts. All five of them will give 11,000 volts AC, which is all we could possibly want. Now choosing the right run capacitor is very important. Right now I'm using 40 microfarad run capacitor to run two microwave ovens but I might change that on the depending on how many ovens I'm running. Let me show you the assortment of run capacitors I keep, which can be inserted or changed at will. Over here I keep a whole series of run capacitors, which vary from 20 microfarad if we want really low current, to 60 microfarad if we want really high current. So depending on how many microwave ovens we use and how much current we want to go at 240 volts, we can choose a small one or a big one, and that controls the overall power of the device which you can't plug directly into the wall. You have to use a run capacitor of the right size for safety and efficiency. I'm 
and we use just two microwave oven transformers that will give us a maximum of 4400 volts AC out at 240 volts in. And that power will go through these red and black wires over here and connect to two copper tubes which are inside one another to form a circular capacitor. Let's take a close look from the end so we can see how they're arranged. When we look inside we can see two copper tubes, one inside the other with a space of about five millimeters between them. One wire from the power supply will connect to the inside tube and give it say a black color, negative voltage. Another wire from the power supply might connect to the outside tube and give it a positive voltage. So we'll get a big voltage difference between the two tubes, which creates a circular capacitor. Now it doesn't work very well with air, so let's show you how we fix that problem using argon gas. Next we can get a cylinder of argon gas from the local hardware store. and We'll attach a little clear plastic tube, which carries the argon gas into those two copper tubes, specifically to the space between them. Now if there's no electricity, it'll just flow straight through. But if you have very high voltage on one side, and negative on the other, then the argon gas will separate into cations and electrons and that will create a circular capacitor which stores a lot of electrostatic energy, just like a capacitor in an electrical circuit. You can see now with five sets of magnets, we're getting a tremendous acceleration of argon even at very low flow rates where practically no gas is flowing through the tube. When we have five sets of magnets and flip the polarity the other way, you can see the argon ions will flow opposite the direction of flow of gas to the tube. Then when we flip the polarity forward again with low argon gas, you can see how much acceleration we're getting of the ions. Five magnets, 40 kilovolt DC. Now we're going to turn up the power. Pretty impressive, isn't it? Even when there's practically zero flow of argon gas through the tube, look how much thrust we get. For about one year now, I've been working on a new kind of ion propulsion drive which could revolutionize space travel as we know it. It's based on a UFO type of propulsion like this. You can see three capacitors around a little disc and there's a flying saucer there, a well-known saucer. And that was explained to somewhat in this crop picture from 1991. But not very clearly. You can th see things spinning in various directions. But it wasn't very clear. And then in 2018, they explained it very simply. This is the saucer. You can see the three capacitors. Current goes in in a curving motion over a magnetic field. So that crop picture from 2018 in Czechoslovakia is telling us how the saucer works. Now there have been other crop pictures in Italy which explain it further. Those six circles in this one represent six electromagnets and you can see there's a little thin line around the outside and particles are divided inside or outside. So what that actually is is a circular capacitor. If we add a gas like argon we might get argon cations on the inside and electrons outside or vice versa. So there'll be a charge between the two elements and that'll store a lot of energy which can be used to shoot the ions out if the capacitor is discharged. And that's what happened to the next crop picture from Italy one year later. You can see the capacitor has been discharged and ions are shooting out everywhere. Therefore, to summarize, we have this UFO here, which everybody knows. The crop picture explains how it works. The wire coil, the spinning gases, makes a circular capacitor like a Hall effect with a lot of energy. And the capacitive discharge shoots it out for space travel.